Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Sustainability 101. We have some brief housekeeping before we start. Your phones are on mute. If you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A box in the corner of your screen, and we'll answer them at the end of today's session, time permitting, or via an email after. And you can always send questions to MAPE Digital at mape.com. We also invite you to visit our health and environment pages on our website, www.mape.com, where we have multiple pages full of the latest industry information, including helpful links and downloads. These pages happen to be overseen by today's speaker, MAPE Corporation's Sustainability Manager, Brittany Storm. Brittany has a background as a sustainable building consultant and a background in construction, and this unique combination allows her to speak to audiences about both the big picture as well as the technical aspects of a project. She's a lead accredited professional, AP, with BD plus C and ID plus C specialties, as well as being a well AP and Fitwell Ambassador. In addition, she's active on many sustainability committees, and I'm happy to welcome her back to the microphone. Brittany, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our presentation on sustainability. Uh, this is just one of many sustainability presentations that we give throughout the year. Uh, some are specific to a <clears throat> single product certification and others like today's will briefly go over all of our sustainable offerings. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out for uh, more in-depth uh, information. I'm going to apologize in advance if I pause throughout the presentation and did not disconnect. I'm just a little under the weather and need to pause for some breaks here and there. I won't get too far into the weeds, as I just mentioned, talking about um, MAPE's commitment to sustainability because we would be here all day. Uh, at MAPE, we are committed to protecting the earth. Thank you using for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, sustainability waste 101. And developing and supplying we have some brief housekeeping before we start. While also Your phones are on citizens. mute. If you have MAPE any is committed questions, not only to please type them into the Q&A box in the corner of your screen, industry, but also and we'll answer them at uh, the end of today's session, time permitting, that are documented or and via an email after. Intervals. And you can we always feel that this send questions for business, to MAPE Digital and at MAPE.com. Sustainability we also is a part invite of you to that visit our health and environment pages when it comes on our to website, our company's www.mape.com. For more information, where we have on the multiple pages full of the latest industry information, report on including our helpful links and downloads. These pages happen to be uh, overseen we're also very by today's proud of speaker, our certification. MAPE it's Corporation's one of those that we Sustainability don't talk Manager, about a whole lot, but probably Brittany Storm. More of. Uh, Fitwell Brittany is a has a background as a sustainable building consultant and a background in construction and, operate healthier buildings. and this unique we combination as allows her to speak to audiences the about both the big picture to well as well as the technical aspects and we are also the of a first project. project to be certified She's in Florida a lead accredited under professional. A uh, single tenant building with scorecard. BD so plus C. Not only does this show MAPE is committed to practicing what we preach, but as it also well as being a well AP and fit well uh, ambassador. Healthy workplaces in addition, she's active on many sustainability committees. And I'm happy to welcome MAPE her back to the microphone. MAPE takes pride in being a leader in the industries Brittany, we compete in. The floor to is continue yours. to be a leader, we need to ensure that uh, we understand the latest industry trends and keep our knowledge base current. Uh, we have lead accredited professionals or lead APs, uh, well APs. Uh, recently, a few members of the sustainability team completed a healthier materials and sustainable buildings course at Parsons School of Design. And we also have lead and well faculty members on our sustainability team. Uh, faculty members have to prove uh, that they're credible, uh, qualified instructors with deep sustainability expertise. So we get to uh, present more technical information on uh, LEAD and WELL. 
We also want to be in a position to influence the ongoing public discussions of green building standards and certification programs. Uh, one of the most effective uh, ways that we can accomplish these goals is to be involved with green building organizations. Uh, through our involvement with these organizations, MAPE can be an advocate for our customers and for the communities that we uh, work in. We're actively involved in numerous green building organizations in many capacities. Uh, we're honored to serve as members, committee advocates, uh, part of day to day memberships, and have won several awards or other achievements for our commitment to sustainability. <clears throat> From below grade waterproofing on parking garages to sound reduction for apartments to restoration of historic buildings, MAPE offers something for every sector of the building industry. Additionally, our products and solutions are designed for maximizing savings in necessary materials and labor. 11 of our applicable 12 product lines have sustainable product certifications that will contribute to various green building certifications. We'll discuss each of those certifications in more detail in this presentation. Um, we aim to not only certify every applicable product so that every project type, no matter how high or low the budget, can include healthy, sustainable products. Uh, also, project teams can create uh, complete green product systems as every product that can be used within the weatherproofing of a building um, has achieved at least one sustainable certification. And we're working towards certifying all product lines where applicable. And you can see on the um, bottom row there, uh, products for marine industry, even uh, our cruise ships that we work with are, are even asking for sustainable products. The construction industry has a significant impact on the environment. Uh, the industry accounts for roughly 25 to 40 percent of the world's total carbon emissions. Mining projects extract minerals needed for construction materials. Companies then transport these materials to different parts of the world. And so both of these processes burn up fossil fuels and the combustion of fossil fuels produces greenhouse gases. One of the biggest environmental problems related to uh, infrastructure development is energy use and global building sector consumes about 36% of the world's energy. So we need to act as an industry um, in, in, in watching what we're, we're depleting natural, naturally needed resources. So we need to watch and be more careful in how we, we manufacture. Uh, other studies show that construction is responsible for 50% of landfill waste, as well as water, air, and noise pollution, as well as destruction of natural habitats. As the effects of climate change and other environmental issues become more pronounced, it's more important than ever to find ways to protect the environment. Fortunately for the construction industry, the same changes will protect the environment from harmful impacts on construction and also improve the quality of construction products and boost profits. So we'll talk about green building standards and certification systems first. There are a lot of green building standards and certification systems out there. Uh, there are green building programs that are used worldwide or just in the US or just in individual states. Uh, as you can imagine, there are even more than what we're showing here. Uh, they vary in requirements. Some are specific to energy. Uh, energy usage. Some again are state specific. So Cal Green is specific to California. Uh, FGBC is Florida Green Building Coalition. Uh, there are also health specific like FitWell or the Well Building Standard. And there are some that are performance specific like ARC. And some that are or have come out um, since COVID um, like the Well Health Safety Rating or the fit well viral response. Um, just for example, I, I know Simon Malls has participated in the well health safety rating. Uh, so uh, Simon Malls has a sticker on, on every door uh, for the malls that are contributing. So that mall in particular has gone through um, 
the requirements to show that their health and safety as it relates to COVID is um, being taken care of and um, it's considered a safe place to go. So while LEED is the most well-known green building program, uh, USGBC has been expanding and we'll skip over um, LEED and ParkSmart and we'll talk about these in more detail. Uh, so starting with ARC, which is the third one in, ARC is a performance platform that measures energy, water, waste, occupancy surveys, et cetera, and it benchmarks sustainability performance of buildings or spaces. A true certification measures and improves zero waste performance. It's encouraging the adoption of sustainable resource management and waste reduction practices. Sites promotes sustainable and resilient landscaping uh, peer, which measures and improves power system performance and electricity infrastructure. Uh, Rely takes a holistic approach to resilient design. It's used to assess and plan for hazards that buildings and communities may face during unplanned events. And the living standard puts sustainability in human terms. Uh, it's an initiative designed to explore the power of storytelling in creating a more sustainable world. And our products contribute to projects pursuing uh, USGBC green building programs such as LEED and ParkSmart. LEED is a green building certification program used worldwide. It's developed by US Green Building Council or USGBC. It includes a set of rating systems or typologies for the design, construction, operation, and maintenance of green buildings, homes, and neighborhoods, which aim to help uh, building owners and operators be environmentally responsible and use resources efficiently. There are 110 points distributed across eight credit categories. There's location and transportation, sustainable sites, water efficiency, et cetera. And these categories are made up of prerequisites that are mandatory and credits, which are points. So the buildings are awarded LEED certification based on the number of points achieved. As you can see here, you need a minimum of 40 points to get LEED certified, uh, 50 for silver, 60 for gold, and anything over 80 points is platinum. It's very difficult to achieve. Um, in my past life as a consultant, um, in earlier versions of LEED, gold was relatively easy to achieve, and now it's, in my opinion, one of the more difficult uh, levels to achieve. There are currently three active versions of LEED. LEED version one through three focused on uh, using building products or materials with recycled content, uh, low VOC content, and sourcing locally. Uh, the newer versions of LEED, which are currently version four or V4 and version 4.1 or V4.1, uh, focus on using building products or materials with environmental product declarations, health product declarations, and more stringent VOC emission requirements. ParkSmart. If you're not familiar with ParkSmart, um, LEED does not certify parking garages. If they're in your project scope, they're excluded uh, from most credit categories. Um, however, LEED came up with a rating system called ParkSmart, and um, it's specific to the certification of parking garages. Uh, transportation in the US now emits more greenhouse gases than power plants. Uh, worldwide, the number of motorized vehicles is expected to double by 2030, so enter ParkSmart. Uh, it's the world's only certification system designed to advance sustainable mobility through smarter parking structures, designs, and operations. Uh, ParkSmart has three main credit categories, management, programs, and technology and structure design. Uh, projects achieving Park Smart Pioneer must earn a minimum of 15 points in each of these categories. And uh, projects achieve bronze, silver, or gold uh, in, in 
these um, categories, uh, you have to achieve a minimum of 20 points to get um, bronze or pioneer. So any additional points go towards um, various thresholds. And um, MAPE contributes to one of ParkSmart's credits, uh, Measure C3. So instead of credit, they call it Measure C3, which is no or low VOC uh, coatings, paints, and sealants. And this ensures uh, all paints, coatings, and sealants applied in the parking structure are little to no VOCs. Next, we'll talk about the well building standard. The well building standard, if you're not familiar, is the first of its kind. It's the first rating system to focus on the occupants of a space. It's developed by Delos and administered by the International Well Building Institute, or IWBI. Uh, it's also certified by the same certifying body as LEED. Um, so I always explain well as, um, picking up where lead leaves off. So lead will look at a kitchen sink for for instance, and they wanna know how many gallons per minute that faucet is, um, it, how much water is coming out of that faucet. Well, we'll look at that same faucet and say, or ask, What's the water quality? How is it going to impact human consumption? And there's certain parameters that the project team has to meet. Um, so it's, it's, they work together, lead and well. Um, also, well, as we talked about, uh, has a health safety rating. So in response to COVID, um, the International Well Building Institute launched the healthy, safe, well, healthy health safety rating system mouthful. Well focuses on various impacts on the body's body system. Uh, each credit within the well building standard has various impacts on the human body. Uh, well breaks down as follows. Under version two there are uh, 10 credit categories or concepts and these categories are made up of preconditions or mandatory requirements and optimizations or points. Uh, under version one, there are less credit categories, um, well renamed a few concepts, and uh, most importantly, added the materials concept to version two. So depending on what version your project is pursuing, um, the pay products contribute to uh, three well concepts, air, materials, and mind. There we go. Excuse me. Uh, similar to LEED, the more points achieved, the higher the certification level. And there are currently two active versions of WELL, as I mentioned. Um, currently, I do not believe there's any sunset date for WELL version one, unless it's come out recently and I haven't heard. Uh, version two now includes the materials concept, uh, which further adds to version one. Uh, now includes VOC and material transparency requirements that we'll talk about today. The International Living Future Institute, or ILFI, is a nonprofit working uh, organization to build an ecological minded restorative world for all people. So, using principles of social and environmental justice. ILFI seeks to counter climate change by pushing for urban uh, environment free of fossil fuels. ILFI runs the Living Building Challenge, uh, which is the most rigorous green building standard, uh, not to mention several other programs uh, like the Living Product Challenge, the Living Community Challenge, uh, the Reveal, uh, Declare, and Just labels. These programs develop a green framework for living in a 21st century world. Uh, living Community Challenge creates a new era for community building and a new version of urban design. It's a certification that scales up uh, innovations made by Living Building and Living Product Challenge um, products and envisions uh, cities and regions as living entities. Uh, there are other programs like CORE, 
Green Building Certification. It's a framework that outlines uh, 10 practices um, that a building must achieve in order to be considered sustainable. Um, the Declare label we'll talk about a little bit later. And Just, uh, which like Declare, it's a transparency platform and disclosure tool. Uh, Just allows organizations the opportunity to publicly document and quantify their commitment to social equity in the workplace. Uh, Just and Declare labels can integrate with Living Building Challenge projects. And um, here are the certification programs that MAPEI contributes to. Uh, Living Building Challenge, whether you're pursuing pedal certification or full certification, as well as uh, core um, red list free products and Living Community Challenge. So we'll talk about uh, Living Building Challenge. Um, ILFI and its various certifications are versatile and apply to different scopes or typologies like LEED and well do. Uh, as Living Building Challenge is the main um, challenge within International Living Future Institute, uh, we're going to discuss this one in more detail than the other uh, types of ILFI um, certifications. There are four typologies, uh, new building, existing building, interior, and landscape, landscape or infrastructure, which is not shown here. Living Building Challenge consists of seven performance categories or pedals, place, water, energy, health and happiness, materials, equity, and beauty. So based on the, on the pedals pursued and their requirements, uh, project teams can achieve various Living Future certifications. Uh, Living Building Challenge, or LBC, is the most difficult or the, the most uh, rigorous standard for green buildings. Uh, I refer to LBC or Living Building Challenge as LEED on steroids. Uh, it's, it goes above and beyond LEED certification as uh, Living Building also strives for net zero or net positive energy. Um, the also request for free of toxic chemicals and low energy footprints. Um, than a, a typical structure. Um, LEED is catching up to the requirements that are asked of Living Building Challenge. There's a lot of similarities between the two. Um, so that the idea of um, LBC being LEED on steroids is quickly going away. Uh, Living Building Challenge is not, in, it's not a competition. Uh, it takes its name from its level of rigor and does not include any sort of contest. I know it's called challenge. To be certified under this Living Building Challenge, projects must meet a series of ambitious performance requirements over a minimum of 12 months of continuous occupancy. Uh, there are several types of certification, like core green building certification, pedal certification, zero energy and zero carbon certifications. And there are currently two active versions of Living Building Challenge. Uh, as, you, as you can see, the credits remain the same. However, the requirements become more stringent as the versions develop. Um, <clears throat> it's not uncommon for projects that pers to pursue multiple rating systems, which means juggling multiple rating systems. Uh, the rating systems we discussed are not meant to compete with each other. Uh, project teams can pursue multiple green building certifications for one building. So for example, the core and shell of the building on the left uh, pursued lead version three and the tenant space pursued uh, lead version four and well. So juggling multiple rating systems um, and their requirements and multiple material lists, it's important to note uh, what works for one system may not work for another. Uh, as more and more manufacturers get on board with the newest green building programs and the latest versions, it's unlikely you will run into this issue. However, there are times when a product will work for version three, but it will not work for version four, or it will not work for well or living building challenge. 
Uh, it's also not uncommon to have lead in fit well buildings or lead in park smart or lead and living building challenge. The sky's the limit on what the project team decides to pursue. Uh, this will make more sense in the sec next section when we talk about green product certifications. So using LEED green building certification as an example, it's also important to note building projects receive LEED certification based on the number of points achieved. And we talked about this earlier. Uh, to get 40 points uh, is the minimum required for LEED certification. And then silver, gold, and platinum have uh, additional points required. Products cannot be LEED certified. Products can also be, not cannot be, well certified or living building challenge certified. There is no such thing as a lead project. Green products can contribute to lead certification, but selecting green products doesn't automatically allow the project team to, lead, to achieve lead certification. There's also no such thing as lead certified people. Uh, they're accredited professionals or APs. Uh, green associates or lead fellows uh, based on their experience in the exams that they've taken. Similar rules apply for living building challenge, the well building standard, and other standards that I mentioned. <clears throat> so at MAPEI, we've identified similarities among all of the rating systems, uh, selected certifications that allow MAPEI to meet the needs of multiple green building certifications and standards. So to be clear, these are the certifications and attributes required for floor setting materials. Uh, every product type is different. So millwork or rebar as examples would have different requirements than floor setting materials. There are similarities among rating systems. Uh, you can see VOC content and emissions is listed several times. Uh, material ingredient disclosure, uh, environmental product declarations. <coughs> There's also attributes that uh, you might be familiar with, like recycled content or regional criteria that some green building certifications require. And uh, other certifications or attributes uh, specific to green building certifications, such as the red list free chemicals for living building challenge, or green squared certification, which is on uh, green globes and lead version four. So you can see the similarities. And products that are uh, starred have, are re required to have third party certification or verification. Uh, for VOC emissions, you'll need third-party tested and third-party verified certification for all of these green building certification programs. Uh, for environmental product declarations and material ingredient reporting, there are voluntary third-party verifiers should manufacturers choose to go the extra step. And we'll talk about that in more detail in the next section. Um, but you can see there, there are similarities among all of the green building certification systems systems and what they're asking for. Oops, going the wrong way. Uh, in summary of the last slide, uh, for floor setting materials, this is what green building certifications are asking manufacturers and project teams to provide for each project or each product. Will every product have all of these? No, and that's okay. But we're gonna break down each of these in the next section. So again, same slide. Um, <clears throat> these are, there are attributes or certifications that focus on reducing impacts on human health and well-being. Uh, there are attributes or certifications that focus on minimizing uh, embodied energy and other impacts associated with extraction, processing, transportation, maintenance, and disposal of building materials. And there are some attributes or certifications that focus on health and environmental impacts. Uh, green building programs have instigated market transformation of building products by creating a cycle of consumer demand and industry delivery of environmental preferable products. 
project teams pursuing a green building program created demand for increasingly sustainable products and suppliers, designers, and manufacturers are responding. Uh, projects are awarded for using products that meet a specific criteria. Uh, again, in a perfect world, every product would have these certifications or attributes. Realistically, that might not be possible, but that's okay. Uh, green building certifications suggest how to find uh, these certifications or attributes, but they're very vague as there are so many uh, third-party certifications or attributes available. Uh, EPDs, for example, uh, green building certifications ask for EPDs, uh, but which type of EPD or which third party verifier selected is up to the manufacturer. Uh, recycled content, same thing. In, in most cases, this information is available through the manufacturer. Uh, third party verified recycled content is voluntary. To meet regional criteria, Manufacturers have to provide extraction and manufacturing locations. Uh, again, this attribute uh, also does not have to be third-party verified. A manufacturer can share this with a project team if applicable. Uh, there's also material ingredient reporting. It's a typical, uh, typically third-party verified, but not required. Uh, like EPDs, um, there's no, there's no specific um, third party verifier or type of report that has to be used. It's up to the manufacturer. Um, <coughs> excuse me. VOC emissions testing is uh, third party verified. I think it's loading here. There we go. Uh, again, the manufacturer chooses. Uh, green squared certification. There are at least two ways to get third party certification. Uh, and then red list is another attribute uh, that can be third party verified. So there's a lot of green product certifications that a single product can have. Come on, there we go. So here's lead, lead language on uh, EPD requirements. It's a lot of information. I pulled it from the uh, lead reference guide. Um, Manufacturers, and this is what you're, I'm summarizing what's highlighted below. Uh, manufacturers have a few options to comply with this highlight, highlighted language. Um, it just gives you four options uh, for achieving this credit, and it's up to the manufacturer to determine if they want to go after it, how they want to go after it, and what type of EPD that they're going to provide. Uh, in order to achieve this credit, I first have to start with having a life cycle assessment or LCA of a product. Uh, LCA is a compilation and evaluation of the inputs and outputs and potential environmental impacts a product system can have throughout its life cycle. Uh, the entire life cycle of a product is examined for this process. Uh, its processes, the components are identified, and then the environmental effects are assessed. So both uh, upstream from the point of manufacture or raw material extraction and downstream, including uh, transportation, use, maintenance, and end of life. This approach is sometimes called cradle to grave, uh, going even further cradle to cradle or cradle to gate uh, emphasizes recycling, and reuse at the at the end of the life rather than disposal. Um, green building programs encourage the use of products and materials for which life cycle information is available and have environmentally, economically, and socially preferable life cycle impacts. An EPD or environmental product declaration is a document which transparently communicates the environmental performance or impact of any product or material over its lifetime. With a construction industry or within the construction industry, EPDs support carbon emission reduction by making it possible to compare the impacts of different materials and products in order to select the most sustainable option. Architects, engineers, and designers are able to choose the most sustainable option for their project. Manufacturers able to optimize the impact of their products and market their carbon transparency. So these are the steps that it takes for uh, us to create a, um, an EPD. Okay. 
<clears throat> and all of the information from the life cycle analysis is plugged into uh, the, the data is collected, um, includes energy use, water use, waste, and emissions, and all of that information is um, measured uh, for potential environmental impacts such as climate change, acidification, smog formation, eutrophication, etc. And all of that uh, is prepared into an environmental uh, product declaration report. Having an EPD does not imply that the declared product is environmentally superior to its alternatives. Uh, pursuing an EPD is again voluntary. Uh, these are two types of examples of EPDs. There are, as we saw, several uh, types of EPDs, but the two that we'll talk about today are the uh, industry-wide EPDs. It's a generic declaration that cover uh, the average product across many manufacturers. Uh, so while these EPDs are third-party verified, um, they do not cover an individual product since they account for the average product in a group. So the middle uh, image is the cover of a industry-wide EPD. It's for uh, products manufactured in North America, specifically um, cement mortars for tile installation. And you can see all of the uh, manufacturers that have participated in providing data to create this environmental product declaration. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's also product specific EPDs. Uh, and you can see the example on the right. Uh, it's a product that's specific to MAPE or products that are specific to MAPE and have gone through third party um, verification of our, um, anal our life cycle analysis. <clears throat> This is the next credit within LEED that our products can contribute to. Um, it's called sourcing of raw materials. Uh, manufacturers have a few options for uh, achieving this credit. Um, some have to do with extended producer responsibility, which is talking about like take back programs, which is not applicable to uh, MAPE or our industry. Um, wood products, material reuse, uh, but the one I've highlighted here is recycled content, uh, which probably many are, are familiar with. Project teams can achieve points for selecting products verified to have been extracted or sourced in a responsible manner. Using products with recycled content results in lower environmental impacts when compared to using raw materials. Uh, recycled co content is a portion of materials used in a product that have been diverted from solid waste stream, uh, pre-consumer, post-consumer, post-industrial, and recycled are terms used uh, in materials, uh, but mean different things. Uh, if a product is diverted during the manufacturing process, it's referred to as pre-consumer or post-industrial. Post-consumer, uh, is referring to materials that are diverted after consumer use uh, that would otherwise be discarded as waste. Uh, Post-consumer is generally viewed as offering greater environmental benefit than pre-consumer. Um, however, pre-consumer waste is much more vast. Uh, it's more likely to be diverted from a waste stream. Post-consumer is more likely to be mixed with other materials and sent to the landfill, making recovery more difficult. Uh, to claim Pre-consumer recycled content, a manufacturer would have to be able to substantiate that the material it's using would have become garbage otherwise. Uh, Post-consumer doesn't always refer to average individual consumer. Uh, the consumer may be the manufacturer. And this is just an example of uh, recycled content certification. Uh, recycled content has many significant environmental advantages, including reducing impacts resulting from extraction and processing of virgin materials. This is an example of uh, MAPE's Maposonic RM. Our Maposonic RM product uh, is a line of sound reducing products that utilize post-consumer content. 
uh, these underlayments are made up of 83% post-consumer recycled content. Uh, for every 100,000 square feet of Mapasonic RM installed, uh, approximately 1,400 tires are diverted from the landfill. Uh, some manufacturers seek third-party verification, but it's not typical. I think in this case, uh, we went after certification for this because it's such a significant percentage of post-consumer that uh, we did want to avoid greenwashing and um, have it third-party verified. And most manufacturers can either provide a certification like this or simply provide a letter stating the post and pre-consumer percentages. Uh, regional materials, again, this is probably one of the more sustain or the most familiar uh, sustainable attributes. Many products travel significant distances before arriving at project sites. Uh, the impacts associated with transportation can be significant, including increased gas emissions. So it's important to select locally sourced products where you can um, support the use of indigenous resources and the local economy. Manufacturers might be able to provide extraction and manufacturing locations. Um, this attribute does not require third party certification or verification. Uh, it is, however, nearly impossible within our industry to achieve this credit. And again, that's okay. Not every product is designed to meet every single criteria. Um, a single product can have many raw materials um, that's required for example MAPE to reach out to every single supplier to find out whether they pulled where they pulled um, materials out of the ground and hope that they're within a 100 mile radius for lead. Uh, lead reviewers typically call us out on that um, so we offer many other useful sustainable attributes or certifications. In past versions of lead regional criteria was its own credit uh, now under version four or 4.1, regional criteria is a multiplier of a few MR credits. That means that a product must have um, an EPD or meet the criteria in the sourcing of raw materials credit, like having recycled content or uh, have a material ingredient report that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, plus, it also has to meet LEED's regional criteria requirements in order to contribute to uh, two times their base contributing cost or two products uh, as the language states. So for a product to qualify for LEED version 4's regional criteria, it has to have an EPD, it has to have recycle or recycle content or another form of sourcing um, or a material ingredient report. It also has to be extracted, manufactured, and uh, purchased within 100 miles of the project site. So it's a lot of requirements to achieve regional materials now. Um, other green building programs may be a little less rigorous than LEED, uh, but just using LEED as, as an example here. There are two types of product declarations a product can have. Earlier, we talked about EPDs. Um, <clears throat> environmental product declarations disclose environmental information, including life cycle assessment and material extraction through disposal. Uh, health product declarations or material ingredients disclose information related to product ingredients and their potential hazards. As there are various types of EPDs, there are also various types of health product declarations, and we'll talk about those. Uh, in addition to meeting criteria that reduces impacts on the environment, products used in the built environment should meet specific criteria for health and safety for occupants. Uh, when talking to sustainability-minded people, they use the word transparency a lot. It means they want to know what's going into uh, your products. And there are many different ways of um, ingesting or inhaling or der dermal absorption of, of uh, materials and overall exposure. Um, so the reason for transparency is we demand to know what's in our foods. Why not demand to know what's in our building products? Same nutrition label setup. 
So in order to create um, material ingredient report, there's a standardized way or path that manufacturers have to um, pursue or disclose product ingredients uh, and improve the health profile of their products. This, en this entails making sure that the substances and materials within the products don't pose any uh, health impacts. So the first step, we have to uh, fully understand what's in our products. Um, so knowing about the product and its potential health or environmental uh, impacts, um, we have to do, we have to screen our products to, to have a better understanding. This is lead version 4's information, uh, 4.1's information on um, how they ask of manufacturers to disclose the material ingredients. I know it's a lot of content. Um, most are familiar with HPDs. Uh, in fact, that's what we get the most requests for are HPDs. I am here to tell you there are more than uh, HPDs. Um, there are other forms of material ingredient reports as they're bulleted here. And all of that on the last slide is summarized here. Uh, these are the different types of green material ingredient reports that are available or certifications. Uh, material ingredient reports are a form of disclosure. They don't necessarily mean a product is more healthy than another. It's just a report that discloses ingredients. Um, it infers it passed a specific set of material ingredient reporting standards. Uh, ingredients were identified and screened. There are no regulations that uh, manufacturers have uh, to disclose this information. It's, it's simply done because uh, manufacturers like Mapay think it's the right thing to do. Uh, this is a transparency document that shows the ingredients in a product and their associated hazards. Uh, while third-party verification is optional, MAPEI MIs are third-party assessed and verified by Green Circle Certified. Uh, this holds us accountable and avoids greenwashing. Um, bonus for customers is that these third-party verified material ingredient reports are worth one and a half products on lead projects. And I'd be happy to explain that more um, to project teams if, if you're interested. Uh, Green Circle Certified is a third-party certifier for these reports, as I mentioned. Uh, while it's a lesser known material ingredient report, uh, the manufacturer inventory is a compliant pathway for projects pursuing LEED, Living Building Challenge, and the Well Building Standard, and many more. Manufacturers can also screen ingredients against a very targeted list of chemicals, often such uh, the red list. Uh, you've heard or you may have requested a red list check, uh, which means that the product is screened to confirm it does or does not contain any substances that are on this list. Uh, red list compliant product is one that contains a red list material or chemical, but is compliant through temporary exemption granted by the International Living Future Institute. Uh, it's usually due to market conditions that make the chemical difficult to remove from the list. Uh, red list free product means that no red list ingredients are present in the product. It's considered uh, a partial optimization as it avoids over, I believe it's 800 different chemical hazards that um, may still contain hazards but are um, not included in the red list. There's also priority for red list inclusion um, and watch list, which again deal with ensuring that um, chemicals are designated where they need to be um, or being watched as potentially red list um, in the in the near future. Uh, Perkins and Will has also something pretty similar. Um, they have a precautionary list. They have compiled the most problematic substances that people encounter in the built environment and uh, allow design professionals to search for key substances and chemicals of concern uh, using filters like project type, product type, and health and environmental impacts. Uh, it's not necessary for a certification or a formal document sharing 
red list or precautionary list information. Uh, red list information are included on declare labels or living product challenge certifications, but those are specific to the International Living Future Institute. We have red list letters that confirm whether or not a product contains red list chemicals or not. And this is an example of one. Next, we'll talk about um, indoor air quality or indoor environmental quality. Um, building materials are called out as one of the most common sources of indoor air contaminants. The source of indoor air contaminants that we just saw includes building materials, um, and it can cause short-term and long-term health effects. Many finishes must be installed using adhesive sealants and other architectural coatings that emit or off-gas uh, VOCs during and after installation. So some VOCs are, are odorous or irritating or toxic to human health. Uh, so it's important to select products with low VOC content and emissions. What are VOCs or volatile organic compounds? It's a carbon compound that can vaporize or become a gas at normal room temperatures and tend to evaporate from building product into the air over time where humans breathe them in. Why are they a problem? Uh, outdoors, many VOCs participate in atmospheric photochemical reactions, making smog. Um, outdoor sources of VOCs include gasoline, diesel emissions, and wood burning. Uh, but indoors, many have um, direct health impacts. So associated, there's you know, short-term um, sick building syndrome. Um, there's a lot of common organic pollutants uh, that are considered five, two to five times higher inside than they would be outside. Uh, indoor air product or indoor products uh, that contain VOCs, uh, paints, adhesives, wood preservatives, air fresheners, pesticides, uh, aerosol sprays. There's so many different ways that you can have uh, breathe in VOCs. This is LEED's language for. Um, lead version 4's language for low emitting materials. Uh, under previous versions of lead and up until version 3 or the 2009, uh, manufacturers only had to provide VOC content that's available on the TDS. Things changed a lot in version 4. Uh, the information you're seeing was pulled from the new construction rating system, specifically uh, low emitting material credit category. And the language is for low emitting adhesive sealants, paints, coatings, flooring, composite wood, ceilings, walls, insulation, furniture, et cetera. Uh, under version four, manufacturers now have to provide additional information. On the far left is a summary of the thresholds for each product type, as well as the requirements that they should meet. Uh, so for paints and coatings or adhesives and sealants, 90% um, of the product would have to meet uh, emissions requirements or 100% and also 100% should be low um, VOC content. This is actually version 4's uh, language, not version 4.1. It changed, the percentages changed slightly under 4.1. Uh, next rating system breaks down uh, what, the, what they mean by emissions and what they mean by content. So the second image there, uh, emissions must meet California Department of Health, Public Health, CDPH, version 1.1 or higher, uh, depending on the version of LEED that you're pursuing. And it also must meet South Coast Air Quality Management District, Squamid Rule 1113 or 1168, depending on um, what product type you have. I want to draw attention to the um, phrase wet applied on site, uh, as you see that a lot um, on projects. Wet applied is a product that comes as a liquid or a dry powder in which water is added on site and then after it dries, it becomes a solid again. Uh, so think grouts, mortars, caulking, uh, concrete mixes, adhesives, those are all wet applied. Uh, so they have a different set of rules than furniture would uh, as a for instance. Uh, this is Wells language 
it's very similar to LEAD. And also Living Building Challenge, they're very similar to LEAD as well. So you saw that we just shared very quickly all of the different green building standards, uh, but they're all asking for the same thing. Uh, you have to provide two documents for each building product or material. Um, again, we're keeping things specific to floor setting materials here. So uh, every flooring adhesive, sealant, coating, underlayment, et cetera, has to provide a VOC content and VOC emission certification showing compliance with CDPH. So in one way, shape, or form, all of those green building standards are asking for the same thing. Um, some green building programs are stricter than others in that 100% of products have to comply. Some are only 75% have to comply. Uh, but if you read between the lines, they're all asking for the same thing. VOC content and VOC emissions. Uh, what is the difference between the two? Content is as simple as it sounds. It's the content of VOCs in a product or the amount of VOCs present in a product. Um, there are regulations in place for VOC content. Um, they're through South Coast Air Quality Management District. They have the most stringent VOC regulations in the US and there are um, rules that dictate VOC content for paints and coatings, uh, including floor coatings and uh, adhesives and sealants. VOC content in a product does not directly translate to VOCs that will be emitted and reactions taking place during application uh, mean that some products with no VOC content emit VOCs under real world conditions, meaning that a product that claims zero VOC content does not mean that a product will not emit VOCs. Um, VOC content is expressed in grams per liter and um, VOC emissions is expressed differently. Um, emissions are present in higher levels indoors. These emissions are what installers and end users breathe in. So manufacturers can voluntarily choose to have their products tested for emissions. And it goes through a 14-day chamber test um, as designated by the California Department of Health and um, products uh, get tested through a, a, a wide array of VOC emission certifications uh, that are available out there. This is a breakdown of South Coast Air Quality Management District Rule 1113 and 1168. They specify max VOC content for various adhesive sealants, paints, and coatings. Uh, wood flooring adhesives, for example, uh, project teams should find wood flooring adhesive with VOC content less than 100 grams per liter. And for floor coatings, in this case, um, <coughs> sorry, also under 100 grams per liter um, for having floor coatings such as concrete floors, um, you want VOC content to be less than 100 grams per liter. It's very difficult to find products nowadays that don't meet South Coast Air Quality Management. And that information um, is typically available on a technical data sheet, a safety data sheet, um, or other product information. Uh, VOC limits are again expressed in grams per liter. Um, product VOC content is found on our technical data sheets or our TDS. As I mentioned, VOCs are newer to green building standards and manufacturers are it, it's still very new to manufacturers as well. Uh, it's still pretty difficult to come by in, in most cases. Uh, it does require third party testing and certification. There are many programs out there, but these four are the most popular. And this is an example of a VOC emissions certification. <clears throat> MAPE's R&D efforts are directed to develop sustainable and environmentally friendly products with low VOC content, as well as low VOC emissions. Uh, these products contribute to air in our homes, um, safeguarding the health of both installers and end users. Our labs are equipped with VOC emissions test chambers. However, to avoid greenwashing, we do go through third-party certification. And lastly, uh, Green Squared. 
certification. This is a multi-attribute uh, standard. It's a certification that looks at our environmental, social, and health impacts. It's drafted by Tile Council of North America's Green Initiative Committee and submitted to ANSI uh, for further development and finalization of the certification. Uh, ANSI A138.1 uh, for Green Squared is a, a specification for sustainable ceramic tiles, glass, glass tiles, and uh, tile installation materials. Uh, it's marketplace recognition of sustainable tiles and again, tile installation materials. Uh, it sets the bar for technical specification of sustainable tiles and tile installation materials. And this is an example of the uh, Green Squared certification. So in a nutshell, uh, this is what's being asked of manufacturers. Uh, in a perfect world of a pay product would have all of these uh, sustainable attributes or certifications. These vary from um, what may be required from um, concrete or drywall or wood flooring. Uh, these again are specific to what's being asked of the pay. And uh, we meet the following sustainable attributes or certifications. Um, and in most cases can provide or can meet the perfect world scenario uh, depending on the product line or product type that um, projects are looking for. So how do you pick a healthy and sustainable material or where do you find them? Um, there's a myriad of disclosures and certifications and lists and standards and labels, um, oh my, uh, in the building industry. And so it can be very difficult to, to figure out what you're looking for, what you need. Um, and on, on top of that, sustainability means different things to different people. Uh, selecting products with sustainable attributes requires uh, research and critical evaluation. There's a wealth of sustainable information available and continues to be developed pertaining to green products. Uh, the key is to start with green building certification system being pursued. Uh, after which the project team should educate themselves on sustainable attributes that are needed to meet certification systems goals and find products that meet those requirements. So ask the project team questions. Uh, will this project be pursuing green building certification? What credits is the project pursuing? Are there specifications specific to sustainability? Um, review specifications. If it is pursuing sustainability, there's typically, or hopefully, uh, 018113 uh, sustainable design requirements and it'll notify you as to which uh, green building certification the project is pursuing um, your spec uh, this your spec section so in in this particular example 09300 um, further details the attributes or certifications that are specific to that division or that CSI section will every product meet the specifications probably not uh, it's best to work with project team and the manufacturer to find the best product or products for your project or uh, work with them to find alternatives. Uh, also, ask MAPE. Uh, I encourage project teams to reach out and ask questions uh, about our products. Uh, you can visit our website. Uh, under the About Us section, we have a Health and the Environment section for uh, general information on our commitment to sustainability and information about the attributes or certifications that we talked about today. Um, under the tools and downloads section, our product information library has a filtering option. Uh, I like to search by sustainability product reports for all of the products sustainable attributes rather than uh, each type. Um, and then under each uh, product uh, and solutions section or each applicable product page will have uh, product reports or and or other sustainable attributes or certifications for download, which looks like this. Uh, in more detail than the last slide, this is our two page summary of a product's sustainable attribute or certifications. Uh, this document is meant to be a one stop report for each product's sustainable information, including uh, backup documentation that project teams need to submit. Um, we also have links to our sustainability email, health and the environment webpage, and link to our mindful materials page that we'll talk about 
Uh, also, our uh, corporate sustainability report that I mentioned at the beginning, there's uh, in-depth information on ARC-1, our commitment to sustainability. Um, they talk about the people section, uh, which are involvement with green building industries. Um, planet section details our initiatives and products detail our sustainable attributes or certifications that we talked about today. Um, there's also a section on how to read our sustainability product reports. And I mentioned here um, Mindful Materials. Mindful Materials, if you're not familiar, is a free platform with aggregated information on human health and environmental impacts for products. Uh, project teams can essentially select building products by filtering through various options, including uh, general material categories such as adhesives or grouts. Um, there's by CSI division, manufacturer, uh, certification standards, uh, green building program, etc. Uh, we have over 375 products on Mindful Materials site, uh, and we do keep this up to date uh, as much as we keep our website up to date. Uh, there are other platforms similar to Mindful Materials, um, UL, Spot, Ecomedes, Better Materials, etc. And that's all I have. Thank you for listening. I went a little over time, but thank you. And thank you, Brittany. Um, we do have a few questions. We are a little over time, but uh, they're kind of important questions, I think. Sure. Um, the one is the question that I am always pestering you with. Uh, it's a good question, I think. <laughs> what is our greenest product? Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, we do get that one a lot. You're right. Uh, <laughs> right? The cliche answer is all of them, uh, as we do try to make all of our products as green as possible. Uh, it's not really an answer. Um, it, it really depends on what certification um, that project teams are pursuing or what they're looking for. Um, you know, if you're pursuing um, LEED, I would say a product that has all of the attributes or certifications we talked about is very important to find, uh, as opposed to pursuing a living building challenge, for example, you, you'll want a product that has at least a material ingredient report and a red list free letter. So it really depends on what you're pursuing to determine what is the greenest product. Gotcha. Um, so basically, reach out to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or reach out to your the sales rep that you work with. Um, they're, they know how to track me down, or they're very familiar with the uh, green building programs that are uh, available and um, can help with finding the best option for you as well. Yep, that's right. Um, another one, of all the certifications that you shared, which is the most important? Ooh, that's... <laughs> um, <laughs> right now, and that is sustainability is always changing, but right now I would say VOC emission certification is the most important. Uh, it's the most requested uh, certification that we get. Um, even if projects aren't pursuing green building programs, sometimes they just do-it-yourselfers are interested in having better indoor air quality. Uh, so that's certainly one that, that's very important to, pursue, to have. Ah, good to know. All right. Well, um, if there aren't any more questions, then I will thank you very much for a, another really great presentation. And I'll thank everybody for their time today. Um, I know that it's very busy and schedules are hectic. And so we really do appreciate the fact that you've tuned in and spent some time with us today. And um, again, if you have any questions, if you think of them, send them to us at mopaidigital at mopaid.com and we'll get them to Brittany or the appropriate person. And uh, thank you again. And we'll see you next time. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.